I just wanted to say that I'm gonna sit on this tiny chair, so I might at some point fall off. Hopefully not. Um, but hello, hi, my name is Sarah, and this is my attempt at um, my attempt at introducing myself to the world of YouTube, the virtual world of 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 booktube why did you start this channel introduce yourself and explain oh sorry i think i'm not supposed to read that part <laughs> anyway why did you start this channel i love watching the people that i follow on youtube on booktube talk about books it really makes me happy a lot of the books that i have ended up reading and loving are books that have been recommended by people on this lovely platform um, and I think it's cool to be part of that, to be part of this community. There's something transcendent about, you know, lo looking at a camera and talking and talking about books and someone else receiving these words um, across the screen. This transmission uh, idea, this the transmission of, of, of love for books is what I dig the most, I suppose. And um, I feel like because this community has given me so much in terms of, well, the books that I've got to discover thanks to it. I want to give back to it. Yeah. And of course, it's pretty fun to talk about books. Hello, Olivia. Olivia is my best friend and she does read a lot of books with me. We have a book club together and that's pretty fun. And you know what? I wish I, wish I had more Olivias in my life. So maybe I'll get to meet more Olivias in my life through booktube. What are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? This is a wild idea. So there is a book. I'm gonna go get it in a second. I'm gonna go get it now. In this book, A Spy in the House of Love, um, the protagonist, she introduced me to the concept of a moon bath, which I am I am surprised I didn't know before, <laughs> but it's basically when you bathe in the moonlight. You 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 strip naked. You lie in your bed. I think that's what the character does. Moonlight is pouring in from the window, and you just lay there, and yeah, you know, like what you do when you're sunbathing, except it's the full moon, and it's supposed to give these healing magical properties. I thought that was a really cool idea and I was toying with the word moon bath in my mind for quite some time and then it dawned on me that moon bath uh, was pretty similar to book bath in terms of um, the letters <laughs> because actually when you say book bath it does not at all sound as smooth as moon bath because you know book is so sharp i decided that it would be such a great idea for no particular purpose perhaps save um an artistic expression of some sorts or at least an artistic attempt <laughs> to fill up a bathtub of books you know full of books and i would imagine a naked woman in the bathtub just bathing in all these books and reading something you know reading poetry or whatnot candlelight and well yeah this sounds dangerous <laughs> i would not suggest trying this necessarily although now that i'm talking about it i'll i'll need to do that was if i was a, any good painter i would probably paint that but since i am not and we're coming back to um ai again i toyed a bit with mid journey and i i checked i checked <laughs> i gave it some references of 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 women beautiful women taking uh, book baths it's kind of beautiful i like it i like the idea so you know what maybe we can reproduce that i think that's pretty far-fetched already um especially given that there's no particular reason that that would be interesting except maybe as an experiment but you know if you want to partake in this experiment together um i suggest you stick around and subscribe and see when the video pops in <laughs> You know, that was my trick. Four, why do you love reading? Reading serves different purposes. So you have reading for entertainment, which I absolutely do and love, which I am used to doing and love even more doing during the winter time, which is currently. Um, and winter time where I am is pretty bleak and gray. Winter is usually the time where I'm gonna read um, very immersive novels. Sometimes I, I, I'm reading these books, you have to stop and you have to pause and you have to reflect 
and some books are just made for for just quick consumption and I just devouring them one other reason that I love reading reading makes me grow as a person I think I believe that I would not be the person that I am today without the books that I had read the past few years um, I think it's a good kind of clutch to life. Whenever I'm going through something difficult, I find that reading always helps. I've been through a difficult period the past couple of years. I became a young mom, so I have these very small kids. It's kind of a confronting experience. You kind of get thrusted back to your childhood and you know, you kind of get to relive the old traumas and things like that and, and stuff that you didn't know were still there buried inside you. Um, and I found that reading nonfiction, reading um, essay collections, people um, talking about their lives, uh, reflecting upon their lives, memoirs, um, have been a really great help actually, like just to realize that you're not alone in your struggles. And of course, essays and memoirs are not always about difficult experiences, but they're, they're, they're a way of, of reckoning with, with experiences and with life in general. And I found that that's been really helpful. Biographies, reading about people that have gone through certain things, it, it all kind of like, it, it all kind of, it, it's like building blocks, they kind of, you integrate them into your life, at least that's what I experienced, I integrate them into my life and it's, and it kind of like helps you formulate an idea of who I am in the world and what I'm here for and it solidifies existence with language and that's one other reason that I love reading. What book or series got you into reading? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I remember very well reading um, Narnia when I was a kid. I love that. Roald Dahl, Jacqueline Wilson books as a child. Those were the kind of books that I really liked. And when I was a teenager, you know, <laughs> the usual 14 year old delight, which was Twilight. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know what? I loved it back in the day. I probably wouldn't now, but back in those days, it was pretty sweet. A little bit older now, around 16, 17, I read The Hunger Games, thought it was fantastic. I still think I would probably like it if I read it again. Um, I haven't read the prequel that recently came out, um, although I'm pretty curious, maybe one day I'll read it, who knows, who knows? I feel this is more ageless, but I really loved to read Tintin. <laughs> I just realized that I don't know what they're called in English, let me check. I'll ask ChatGPT. oh ho ho ho. Oh, it's the same. Tintin. Yes, it's the same, but then well, how do you pronounce it? Do you pronounce it like Tintin or something? This is the ultimate question. Wow. Yes, I love that. I, I love those series. Next question. Next question. What challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? Oh, my mind is all about identifying challenges. I think um, also, especially since I've become a mom, that, that has been one of uh, my specialties. Challenge scanning, <laughs> challenge anticipation. Um, it's already challenging to be honest. Yeah, so the kids are a thing. Um, they, do, they do take a lot of the time that I have. And you know, time is also, it needs also to be used for other things such as work, such as, um, reading obviously writing taking care of all the other stuff that that you need to take care of when you got kids um and so i think time is the most time management in general even though maybe it's unrelated to book two but it just adds another layer to my life i want to do too much maybe a few of you will be familiar with the affliction of wanting to do so many things so many different things and only having such little time available i think it's really weird because i don't want to waste time thinking about time I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I'll have a hard time finding ideas for videos, but I don't think so actually. I've just been looking at my bookshelf and I realized that I, um, I have a lot of books to talk about. Yeah, maybe one of the big challenges will be to integrate the books that I want to read just for my leisure, you know, pleasure, and also books that I want to read perhaps for video ideas. Um, one video idea that I already have, I don't know if you can see behind me. Oh yes, you can see, but you cannot really see because the background is blurry. But here I have a row of like acting books, um, books on acting, nonfiction and fiction, in which um, characters are actors or um, memoirs of actors. I really wanted to make a video or a video series about books on acting, for example. 
um, I think I'm not answering the question anymore. Yeah, so, well, maybe I'm answering several questions at once. And you know what? That's okay. Okay, when did you start reading? I started reading when I was a baby. When my mom showed me my first picture books. Yep, back in 1995. I was born in... <laughs> I think books have always been a part of my life. My mom has told me several times um, as I, well, you know, especially since I've had my babies, uh, to read, to read to them, read to them all the time, like make books a thing for them so that they, they grew up to like reading. I've been read to a lot as a child and so I think I associated it with a lot of, you know, comfort. I think that did help into to making me a reader my whole life. I think books have always been part of my life. There are certainly times in my life that I have, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not very old. Well, that's relative. I don't know. I'm 28. You tell me, is that old or not? I don't know. But in my opinion, it's not that much. Or maybe it is. Shit. It's the middle. It's the middle. It's almost the middle. Who knows? Oh my god, what if I die tomorrow? Shit, I have to knock on wood. Okay. Well, I was, a, I was a very quiet kid and I was a very shy kid and I was a very shy teenager. And then at some point, I don't know what happened, but I think at around... 16, 17, I slowly started to open up a bit, slowly started to have a social life, to have more friends. So there's a big period in that, you know, few years that, few, few years that I haven't read much. I guess when I got pregnant, I started reading much more because I couldn't go out as much, couldn't have as much of an elaborate social life. I couldn't entertain that lifestyle anymore because of the babies and yeah. I replaced my um, adventures, my external adventures with uh, adventures in here, thanks to books. Yeah, so yeah, I've always been reading. I started to read, never stopped. That's the short answer. Where do you read? I read pretty much everywhere um, in my house. It will depend. I will have a, I will have a mood, a vibe. There's certain books that I want to read at certain moments and there's certain spots that I want to chill in certain moments. I can read in public, I can read in the tram, in the train. I love reading in the train, like long train rides. I love reading in long train rides. Um, I read, yeah, pretty much everywhere. Uh, ceci dit, it does not mean that it is easy. I struggle with concentration and I find myself sometimes completely losing focus when I'm reading a book. Like my phone is there and it's vibrating and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta think something. Or like when I'm reading and all of a sudden I think about something and I would be like, and I kind of, I kind of like interrupt my reading with uh, with something that's happening, and so it does happen that when I'm reading in cafes or whatever, I can get kind of carried away by whatever's happening around me. Um, and I guess, I guess when the book is good, like recently when I read The Goldfinch, I was just, I was just reading it everywhere, like standing up in line at the shop, or like the other day, my my. My partner was um, on the phone. We went to a bar for a drink. Um, he was on the phone for like, I don't know, a minute. And I was like, oh shit, he's on the phone. I gotta read the book. I could read a really, really immersive book anywhere. Donna Tartt, man, she's pretty good. What kind of books do you like to read? That's a cool question. I finished The Goldfinch recently. I showed you um, A Spy in the House of Love. So I'm also I'm also very interested in classics. What, uh, what makes a book stand the test of time? Recently, I also really liked um, The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera uh, and classics. I really like Hemingway, you know? Maybe the guy wasn't so great. Maybe he was a misogynist. I like his books. I like his writing. Um, right now, I'm reading an essay collection by Andre Asiman called False Papers. It's one of his first essay collections. I've been reading a lot of him recently, the past few months. I've discovered him very recently and I loved his style. And then I picked up one of his uh, other essay collections, a more recent one. He's a very philosophical writer, actually. He's a very um, a ruminative writer. I am also trying to read some French books since I'm, um, I'm part French. I realized not so long ago that I didn't read much, many French books. And I think part of the reason why is because I'm a bit of a junkie and I'm a bit of a, I don't know, like, I'm like, I kind of want to read as many books as possible because this is a complete obsession of mine. And um, I realized that when I read French books, I was much slower and it kind of, it kind of, it kind of annoyed me a bit. But I think I'm outgrowing that. Uh, so recently, 
I've read. I've read recently Marguerite Duras, L'Amant, uh, and in, in English it's The Lover, which, which actually made me really curious to read it in English. Um, I, I prefer reading in English. I don't know what makes me appreciate it more. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. No, I don't know, because French is really beautiful. Maybe I'll grow to like it more if I read more of it. So, therefore, yeah, what kind of books I read? Um, when I was in Paris last, I bought this book, Colette's Paris Je T'aime, which is a um, essay collection about Paris. Ce grand, ce long amour qui m'a tenu et me tient encore attaché à Paris. Il n'a pas fleuri sans effort, mais je ne pouvais pas y échapper. Non, mais je ne pouvais pas échapper à Paris. J'ai trouvé l'un après l'autre tant de provinces. C'est à peine en un demi-siècle et plus s'il me rassaisit. So that sounded nice, didn't it? I, I, catch, I actually turned myself on when I speak French. Okay, maybe that's an overstatement. But, but it sounds nice and maybe I'm a slow French reader because when I read French, I tend to like to read it out loud. Um, I'm like, ooh, this is a different person here. Like, who am I? I don't live in France anymore, so when I do read in French, it, it's kind of like this weird... Thing. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. Another book um, that I uh, that is on my TBR in French, Discours sur les passions de l'amour by Blaise Pascal. It's about love. It's a. It's. I think it's part of his pensée, thoughts. I don't know what the titles are in English. Discourse on the passions of love. Ah, uh, this is the only way I can explain what kind of books I read because it's quite varied. I don't really read a lot of um, um, romance. I don't read a lot of hardcore sci-fi, although sometimes I do. Um, Three Body Problem, for example, amazing. Three Body Problem, if you haven't read it yet, before the series comes out, like, do it. I think, I think even if you don't like sci-fi, you will be flabbered, you will be like, mind blown. I was mind blown, I loved it. This is, uh, talking about self-help, I don't know if it's really self-help, but it's interesting. It's called Solve for Happy, Engineer Your Path to Joy um, by Mo, Mo Gaudat. Wonderful guy um, that I discovered online on one of these podcasts. And he also has a podcast. And he was one of the... His, his, his son died when his son was 20 years old. And when he talks about the story of writing this book, it's quite insane. 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. I heard that this was a book about life disguised as a book about time management. Uh, someone said that, I don't remember who exactly, and I was curious, and then I saw the reviews, they're pretty good, so I'm really curious about this as well, so maybe I'll do like a video to combine these kind of two things. Um, what Lies Ahead When There Is No Future, Too Late to Awaken, that's actually the title of the book. Um, this is more of like global catastrophe, global doomsday, how to think about the times that we live in kind of book. Creating Sweet Grass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants. I'm also really interested in these kind of books. Why you should read children's books even though you are so old and wise. Of course I have kids so I'm interested in this and I do read children's books. Um, but someone, my friend, Olivia, she offered this to me and uh, this is also a good example of the books I like to read. I like to read these like kind of essays just in like these small books. George Saunders, a swim in a pond in the rain in which four Russians give a masterclass on writing, reading and life. I love books on writing, books on reading. I will be talking about them. I have not read yet this one. I have not yet read this one and I'm excited to do so. White Holes, Inside the Horizon, Carlo Rovelli, all about white holes, physics. I love science books as well, popular science books. Um, I'm trying to understand a bit what's going on. Do we live in the matrix? What do you think about that? You know what, maybe we do. And if we do, well, at least we're not alone. I hope, I suppose. Probably, hopefully. The Common Reader, Volume 1, another one of these books, books on reading from Virginia Woolf. Uh, Virginia Woolf, actually, I have not read it. I read one of her essays, but that's it. And I think this year is the year that I really have to seriously start reading Virginia Woolf. So I have a lot of Virginia Woolf on my TBR. I want to read this book soon. Elena Ferrante, The Story of a New Name, which is a very popular novel series. Also, one of the books that I want to read next, which I have to because I have a book club next week in which I have to read it, but it looks interesting, is called uh, The Wager by David Gran. A lot of people might know this because I saw that it was a Goodreads winner, I think, for the best, one of the best nonfiction or something like that. So pretty interested in that as well. Shipwreck, Mutiny and Murder. Pff, that's my jam. That's my jam. I love Tales of the Time of this, this era. 
I always find it flabbergasting how people used to dress, especially like noblemen and stuff. Pretty funny. So yeah, this is kind of the books I, I read. I read a lot of feminism, cultural criticism, Patti Smith, Deborah Levy, I love Rachel Cusk, Joan Didion. So those are kind of like, you can kind of group them together, I suppose. I see there's some Margaret Atwood, Stephen Fry, a bunch of books on writing, Anne Lamott, um, writing memoirs. <clears throat> I also have a collection of books on Paris. I like books on Paris because I lived there for most of my life. I grew up there. And um, there is something magical about cities and literature, literature, um, like, you know, similarly, I'm very interested in books, books set in New York or books set in one of these big cities um, in which the city is a character. Um, and then I have a lot of nonfiction. You have books on how to grapple with the climate crisis, books on how to grapple with uh, the impending collapse of civilization. All my shelf up there, you have the sort of more genre, 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 mystery, sci-fi. I do, I do read sci-fi often. Fantasy as well. I think fantasy is my least read kind of book genre, but I do like it. I do love a good fantasy book uh, if I'm in the mood. Winter is one of those moods. So maybe, maybe this winter I'll read one of the fantasy books if you have any suggestions, by the way. Murakami, magical surrealism. Yes, so it's pretty varied as you can see. <laughs> what is your favorite book or series and why? The other question after that is, is there a book that you would recommend to everyone? Um, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, yes, yes. So many books, so many books. Um, yeah, so there is a part of my shelf, so there, um, that I put my favorite books, my favorite reads, but you know, there's also other books that I classified elsewhere that I really, really liked, so it's difficult. I did not really go through them. Oh, I forgot one. A Movable Feast by Hemingway, definitely one of my favorites. I, I loved I loved it. I think his style is quite nice. Actually, that's an understatement. I love it. I love it. I love Hemingway's writing. I love, I love it. So I chose a few books from that favorite corner of mine. One was Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. I loved this book. I adored this book. The writing, so good. And I will never, ever forget it. So this is Open Water. It's about a man who falls in love. A black man who falls in love with a woman. Um, it's about a special connection he has with this woman. Uh, very profound, deep, sparkling fireworks, chemistry, the tentative movements towards uh, romance, while at the same time uh, reflecting on uh, manhood, masculinity, particularly black masculinity um, in um, London. I thought this was great. I will definitely revisit it. All these books, I will definitely reread at some point in my life. Next, After Sappho by Selby Wince Schwartz. I swear you will never read anything like it. This was a revelation for me. One of my favorite books. The writing is just mesmerizing. It's amazing. It's basically written in vignettes, um, little vignettes about the lives of women who were pioneers in a way. Women artists, so writers, actresses, women that were were kind of defying what people expected what a woman should be. Um, because they were artists, I discovered through this book so many figures that I didn't know of before. Natalie Barney, who was a writer, poet in um, France, in Paris. I think she was half American, half French. Um, she was organizing all these literary um, literary parties and uh, she was a lesbian, a very notorious lesbian. A lot of lesbians in this book. I loved it. The writing was exquisite, just so good, so good. I did not talk about it in my favorite books of 2023 because I read it before. And I remember, I remember seeing this at the bookshop and not paying attention to it. Like, shame on me. The wonderful people at the bookshop who recommended this to me. One of the booksellers there was, was talking to me one day. We were chatting in the cafe, in the, the wine bar right about the bookstore. And she was like, you have to read it. You would love it. And I thought, oh, okay. I was actually, I was shaken. If she never had told me to read it, if I never had this conversation, I would have missed out one of the best books of my life. 
truly. Maybe I'll talk about authors. This is just an example, Annie Dillard. I recently discovered her. She writes, she writes about nature, about humanity, about, she's a very philosophical writer. Um, pretty hard to describe because sometimes she goes on these very strange digressions. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to explain. I, I should make a whole video about her. I love her writing style. It's just completely unique. This is for the time being. It's very metaphysical. It w actually, I'll just read it back to you. Why do we exist? Where did we come from? How can one person matter? Annie Diller, the Pulitzer Prize winning author of Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, one of her really good books that I have not yet read. It's on my TBR pile at the back. And one of the most compelling writers of our time, uh, searches for answers in her most profound narrative to date. With her keen eye penchant for paradox and yearning for truth, Dillard renews our ability to discover wonder in even the darkest and most remote of life's corners. This was super unique. Um, she talks about this Jesuit um, priest, Taylor de Chardin. She talks about spiritual intellectuals and she talks about how many times in history they thought that it was the end of the world that the world was ending this particular book is one of my favorites of hers it talks about deaths um there's this these profound i don't know her books are just this mosaic of, of insights and stories that are so unique the first time i discovered dillard was uh, through her book um the writing life which is all about life of a writer and what is a writer and the the um, philosophical aspect of it and I will never forget in her book when she says that you have to write as if you're dying what would you write if you were on your deathbed right now and uh, I understand how her books are so mesmerizing and she can just she can literally talk about a beaver and I will be my jaw is just dropping here for example just just a couple of sentences about a hospital uh, chapter 4, it starts with this word, birth. This hospital, like every other, is a hole in the universe through which holiness issues in blasts. It blows both ways, in and out of time. On wards above and below me, men and women are dying. Their hearts seize, give out, or clatter, their kidneys fail. Their lungs harden or drown, their brains clog or jam and die for blood. Their awareness lower like lamp wicks. Off they go, these many great and beloved people, as death subtracts them one by one from the living. About 164,300 of them a day worldwide and 6,000 a day in the United States. And the hospitals shunt their bodies away. Simultaneously, here they come, these many new people, for now absurdly alike, about 10,000 of them a day in this country as apparently shabby replacements. And that's it, that's the whole paragraph. She asks questions throughout the book and it's really just these complete simple facts but the, the way she writes, it just kind of slaps you in the face. What I like about this book in particular is that it uses numbers and um, numericals a lot. So it will talk about a random genocide in a random time like 5,000 years ago, something like that. But it, and then she will say, you know, 300,000 people died in this genocide. And, you know, we don't talk about it because history is so grand and so vast and history keeps repeating itself. And ah, this book, I shall be talking about this book in my favorite nonfiction read. So maybe I should keep it away. I chose these books that I'm going to talk to you about because these authors are authors that when I have discovered them, I could not not but read most of their books. Natalia Ginsberg is one of them. I will talk about her in one of the other videos as well. Um, Rebecca Solnit, my most read author of last year. Seven books. I read seven books of this woman. So good. Um, this one is a field guide to getting lost. She wrote a lot about activism, about uh, political activism, about environmentalism. Um, about feminism, so she is an uh, activist. This is a bit of, this is my favorite books of, book of hers, but this is a little bit less political. Um, this, is, this is quite philosophical, a field guide to getting lost. It's essays, it's, it's quite personal. It's all about 
how getting lost is sometimes the best way to find yourself. She meditates on life and on love and on loss and what loss and love mean. Rebecca Solnit, definitely. Oh, God, I love her so much. Now we're going into fiction a bit. Um, Donna Tart, I just finished The Goldfinch, as I have said, so good. Oh, just amazing. I was, I was reading this everywhere on the loo. This is just too good. This is just too good. It, I've never read such such beautiful drawn-out characters. The plot is perfect. Um, and you can you can think it's a long book. I understand why people would drop this. I actually read it the first time. I started it like a few years ago. I went like 200 pages and until I realized I wasn't really in the mood to commit to it. And then, um, I don't know, it just came out of the blue. I, I just thought, I don't know why, but I gotta read The Goldfinch right now. Wow. So I'm pretty sure that any of any anything that she writes I will love. And of course, The Secret History. I feel like this is in everybody's favorite novels because of course it is just modern masterpiece, modern classic. I don't even have to introduce or describe it. Just gotta read it. And then um, one book I think just will surpass them all in terms of fiction. All of them, even Donna Tart. Very different though. But I was hesitating. When I read The Goldfinch, I was like, is this my favorite book ever? But no, I think I will always keep a place in my heart for this book that I'm going to talk to you about. If there's one book that I will keep recommending, probably it's this one and The Three Body Problem, although it's so specific that... Um, and also, it's this, this one is more me. What is it? It's Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Oh! I loved this book. I read it five times or something. Although I'm not sure I read it in full five times. I know I know that I can enjoy this book. I can just open it in whatever chapter, whatever passage, and I will love it. There is something so special about Emily St. John Mandel's mind, her way of writing. She writes about a whole ensemble of characters. Um, and she kind of connects their lives together. For her, writing is really in the rewriting. So she will have a theme or an idea in mind. She will write around this theme and then in the end, when it's time to rewrite the book, to edit the book, that's where she really finds the book. Because it's, non it's never linear. It's not like this happened first and then that happened and then that happened. Of course, she finds a plot. There is a plot. And I must say, I loved all of her novels. Um, of course, I have my, my favorites, but but all of them have this specific Mendelian quality. I don't know. She has a really cool insight on life and on, on the world and on characters. What made me want to read this book in the beginning was when I, I was researching books on acting. As you know, I love acting. This came up and um, I remember reading about this book in a list of books book recommendations. The blurb was like, Shakespearean um, acting troupe travels post-apocalyptic North America. And I was, I got to read this book. I have never, never seen that combination. And it's so interesting and it's so well rendered. And I remember as soon as I started this book, I was entranced. I knew I would reread it again, and I did. I knew I would love it, and I did until the end. It did not disappoint. Ah, it's just so good. It's just, I love how she connects things together. I just love this book. Wow. Uh-huh. My main recommendation, Station Eleven by Melissa and John Mando. Please read it. Okay, so as I was editing this, I realized that the camera coincidentally switched off at the precise moment I quit rambling about Station Eleven. Yep, luckily not while I was in the middle of my rambles, <laughs> which would have been quite awkward, but you know, that means I didn't get to say goodbye properly. Like to the camera with, uh, with flying kisses and winks and stuff. So yeah, this is my attempt at doing that with my voice. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. Um, you're wonderful. Or skipping around, you know, however way you rock your boat, however way you float through your YouTube. Um, <laughs> it was a pleasure to ramble on and on and on about books. Speaking about books, <laughs> I read more than 100 books in 2023 and the videos coming up will be all about those books. My favorite books, my ultimate book recommendations, you know, from my favorite reads from the past year, fiction and nonfiction. So if you want to stick around, get the scoop early, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the other side. Ciao.